You're listening to the Lion Podcast. Yes, people, welcome back. We're here now with episode 12. Can't believe it. We made it. We made it to 12. <laughs> yeah. So give thanks for all the listeners out there still keeping up with us. And um, let's kick it off with some Lion Heights news. So what do we have going on, guys? At the show at Sahara Lounge, which is gonna Tom. Why are you talking about so far away from your mic, bro? <laughs> you sound checked up close to the mic, and then you decided to. <laughs> but anyway, all right. Again, what do we got going on? We got something popping on the next week. We got Sahara Lounge on Friday night, March fifth. Special guest Ross Idre. Yeah, and I'm gonna get Ross Idre on the phone here in about 20, 30 minutes. Um, and we'll, we'll we'll talk to him about it and inter, kind of introduce him to y'all. And I think this might be one of his first times to come and play Austin. So we're happy to bring a bridging up and, uh, you know, check out what we got going on. So Man, it's going to be the beginning of a residency that we're going to be doing at Sahara Lounge the first Friday of every month. Yeah. Where it's going to be us and, uh, you know, special guests or friends or whoever to get and come and perform. And so it should be cool. Yeah, people. Uh, and just, just so you know, it's still following certain COVID guidelines um, where once you get inside, you have to wear a mask and you have to sit at a table um, and there's not really a whole lot of dancing. So, But outside, you can. there's also tables and you can relax and hang out outside as well and still hear the music. So if you don't want to be inside, there is an outside patio. But anyway, so we hope to see everybody out there. Um, the other thing is, you know, we're still just talking about blank check and everything is out on Spotify and all streaming platforms. And we even put out a little, um, DJ mix from Jabil. So Mm -hmm. you can go check that out. If if you want to just get a quick taste of every song, go listen to the, it's actually not a quick taste. It's 20 minutes long. I don't know if y'all saw that. (laughs) It still touches each song for a little bit. So yeah. See which one's your favorite. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, other than that, I don't think we have much else going on. So just put that Friday on your calendar every first Friday. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, if, if anybody, any other Texas artists out there want a little showcase, like hit us up, let us know what you got. Send us, you know, anyway. So the other thing, uh, we can just move on to new music. What do y'all think? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. So it is that section of the show where we do that. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So I think I think we got your t- your song first, Tom, right now. <clears throat> all right. Which one? This Sueño yep. Realidad. Yep. Real- yeah. Sueño Sueño Realidad. 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 Which of course means a a dream made reality, basically. Hmm. Is it all right. Sueño. I've heard that before. All right, well, let's check it out. Puerto Rican group. Hay algo más allá del horizonte, poco capaz de ver. Un alma que pregunta hacia dónde hay mucha sin saber. Soñando con esta novela Todo un lindo final Aunque la realidad de azul me llena Aún puedo escuchar Ya Ya verás llegar A esa felicidad This happiness What you have to dream about. Mm. The happiness what you have to dream about. Don't go backwards. Make it to the end. And then you'll see. Yeah, man. So where are they from again? Puerto Rico. Okay. I'm telling you, man, Puerto Rican reggae bands, I think they're <laughs> the best in all Latin American reggae. They're just tight. The music's yeah. really good. That's a bold claim. 
It is. It is. <laughs> it is, but I think it's true. There's some good reggae acts out there, but it's just the Puerto Rican groups are on another level, man. Yeah. Hmm. All right. All right. Who got this Ray Price? That's me. <laughs> All right. Of course. Intro intro to two in my ut. Intro. Well, uh, I've heard this song done by many people. It's definitely not like an obscure song, but <clears throat> I really like this. James, I just got to ask you a question. Sorry. Not, you're interrupting me. <laughs> my, never interrupt me. <laughs> but can you hear your own voice? Can you hear your own voice? Yeah. Okay. Can you hear my voice? Barely. It's very t- tiny. Can you hear me now? There we go. No, I can't. We've done we've done this at least twelve times, and James is sorry. He's, I'm gonna and put you on blast. Has still not figured out how to speak into the mic. Into the mic. Here, Tom. When we do this every single time. Tom, Tom's getting better. But. The one trick is to uh, when you're speaking into the mic and you want to look at someone, you can't move your head. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> or you kind of can. Like if, if you go like this, I can still kind maybe, of look at you. Maybe one of the topics should be and mic like this technique. As well. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I think that we should invest in clip-on mics that will never have this problem. Ooh, look, James, mic would be nice. I agree. And I t- twenty bucks <clears throat> at Walmart. That that's that's on you now. Go, twenty bucks. Go to, well. You know that no twenty dollar microphone is going to sound that good. I'm going to get a headset. Even an <laughs> SM57 is eighty to hundred. A headset that I can use here and on stage. You mean like Britney Spears? Yeah, exactly. I second that. I um, <laughs> I I vote that decision as a no. And viewers at home, let us know, yeah. yay or nay? Should Jeremy wear a Britney Spears head? What, She's not the microphone. only one that does that, by the way. <laughs> All band boy, or boy bands do it. <laughs> no, we did see a reggae band, too. Yeah. What was the band? Uh, Black Was Black Slate doing that? It might have been Black Slate. Anyway, it makes sense when you think about it. It looks kind of weird at first, but I mean... It does make sense. Freeze I up think he hand. was playing a guitar and had that. Yeah, he did. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was badass. And I pretty much want to be that guy now. You know what I saw the other day watching the video? Uh, a, <laughs> a key... Uh, <laughs> A key, a key pedal steel. Why are y'all even laughing about that? <laughs> I think they're laughing because my uh, voice cracked. Yeah, I know they are. But I'm saying that's so dumb to laugh at that. It's so they dumb. Are. Mushrooms. Viewers at home, uh, <laughs> send us a message. Let us know if, if that's something worth laughing at or not. <laughs> Nobody's going to say Because I think it is. <laughs> Sorry, James. What are you saying? My balls literally just dropped. <laughs> uh, what I was saying was, there's a. I saw a pedal steel. Like guitar that someone had. How does that work? I have no idea. So are the video. pedals? Uh, well, like it might buttons? just be like a lap steel kind of oh, thing, okay. but it was like a flying V, like this big thing. I was like, what? It's kind of cool. Anyway, so my song yes. that I chose uh, is called For the Good Times, just like what we're having right now. Uh-huh. And uh, our time is probably not as depressing as the song might lead on to, but <laughs> <laughs> the. the uh, I mean, it's kind of like a melancholy sweet. It could be sad. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you interpret it. But uh, I really like the string line, the string arrangement. Mm-hmm. And pretty much the whole arrangement is good. The lyrics are good. And, uh, uh, yeah, I never heard his version. And Let's I check like, it out. I like it. Let's check it out. Don't look so sad <laughs> I know it's over But life goes on And this old world Will keep on turning Let's just be glad We had some time to spend together There's no need to watch the bridges that we're burning Lay your head upon my pillow Hold your warm and tender body close to mine. Why are you trying to make me feel stuff, James? Hear the whisper. Because in today's modern society, I think we are over 
uh, bombarded with technology. <laughs> Instagram, Facebook, and no one really truly feels anymore. And make me believe you love me one more time. I can't even hear what you guys are talking about. <laughs> I ruined the song, sorry. <laughs> I'll get along. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, that was a nice tune, James. Give thanks for that one. Nice. I like I like that melancholy melancholy kind of melancholy. I like that melancholy kind of music. I don't know. Yes, there were many nights in Chicago where it'd be very cold to go out and uh, you just put stuff like that on and stare out the window. <laughs> <laughs> on my trip down here, driving from Delaware to Austin, I was playing a lot of that kind of stuff. And Jeff, who y'all might know from the last episode. Was it the last episode? Yes. Yeah. Um, would be like, why do you keep listening to this stuff? Like, I'm trying to stay awake and like help you drive through the night, and you're just listening to like the sleepiest music ever. But it, you would stay awake listening. I to like that? it. Yeah, it's. I don't know. It's it's, it's cool. Relaxing. Hmm. But he was like, play something that's not boring. Interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah, I have to listen to songs I really, really, really know, or like high, high energy something. Yeah. When I'm driving. All right, you must you you must have the next one, the Scaramucci. Yeah, Scaramucci. <laughs> uh, this song came on shuffle uh, while I was delivering, and uh, I just thought it was cool. It's by Sao Sao Paulo. Is that how you say it in Brazil? Yes, yeah. Sao, Sao Paulo. Paulo, ska jazz um, orchestra. Okay. Or whatever it is. Every so country it, has a ska jazz orchestra. It's cool because I don't know if, the, if that's a country. It's yeah, but yeah, like yeah. So oh, Paulo, sorry, not country. Well, Brazil, Brazil, but, <laughs> even yeah. cities because there's a New York one. There's right, you know, yeah, like cities. So um, and the cool thing I didn't know until later was that Ken from the Scottalites <clears throat> is featured on there, and also oh, um, what's his name Zem, the, the saxophone player, is. Yeah, is also featured on it. So it's got two members of the Scottalites that are featured on it. And it's just kind of a weird ska tune. Figured I'd right. show y'all. Let's check it out. song it also just it kind of sounds like let's play the weirdest stuff we can play <laughs> it's almost it's kind of dark you know what remind yeah. me have you ever heard that band uh voodoo glow skulls oh mm-hmm. yeah dude it sounds like kind of voodoo glow skulls yeah yeah ask. i i definitely grew up listening to voodoo glow skulls when they toured through like los carnales used to play with them a lot and that whole like ska third wave kind of yeah this is definitely yeah. third wave yeah <laughs> Which good. I don't listen to a lot of anymore, but I used to listen to a lot of it. And so it was yeah. funny when it... I was listening to like a skinhead and like blue beat 
and uh, old ska playlist. And it was a bunch of old stuff. And then this song came on, and I was like, Whoa. Oh, this is kind of it's kind of dope. <laughs> yeah, 2016, I think. So oh, okay, not that old. Yeah. Hey, yeah, man. I I kind of fell off that music. I haven't really been listening to ska, or you know, at all. I like it better when it has the 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 jazz influence in there. Yeah, keeps it more interesting. Like New York ska jazz orchestra is really cool. And- mm-hmm. For real. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all. Yeah, well. Uh, the only other notes I have is that, you know, t- sometimes we like to talk about things that happen in the news and current events. And uh, James brought this one to the table, talking about Mr. Tiger Woods. I'm not even. This sh- news is huge. I don't even really know what happened. I, he got hurt, right? Is this a news? So you do is know. This is a podcast news. I know break? he got. I know people are like, pray for Tiger Woods. Oh, yeah. Pray. Pray for him. He uh, got in a car accident, serious car accident, Jeremy. Wow. I didn't know that. And. Uh, Multiple sustained multiple leg injuries and may never play golf again. Damn, he wasn't on drugs either. It was, it oh was, yeah, it's true. He was going to a uh, TV by the uh, what's the golf channel? I don't have a TV. I have one. What's the golf channel? Is it called the golf, golf channel? TV. <laughs> golf channel, probably. Golf channel. <laughs> he was going to do some event with them. Huh. So, what did it, how did it happen? Do you know? Like what? I think he was speeding to get there. But so he there just was, crashed himself. Yeah, and then they had to use the uh, Jaws of Life uh, to get him out. To get him out. Wow. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Damn, that sucks, man. Tiger, man. I He's, thought he was... This he, is going to sound bad now, but wasn't he kind of on... No, he, actually, he just won that thing. Uh, didn't he just win yeah, like, he a just, big championship? He won something pretty recently. I was going to say, isn't he Isn't he on the out of his career well, anyway, which sounds insensitive, but... He, he is so on the tail about Tom end. Brady. As far as age goes, but I mean, he's also like the Michael Jordan of golf, yeah, right? Yeah, he just killed that other whatever. I don't know golf either, so championship or whatever that was. He apparently won that. So yeah, damn. Yeah, he beat Shooter McGavin. <laughs> yes, he did. I remember that. I saw that. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, you have to still say give thanks because he's alive. He made it mm-hmm. out alive, and that even though it sucks that yeah, he might not be able to play golf on that level again, but. He's At least he ain't dead. Yeah, so. All right. And he's worth millions. Yeah. Oh, yeah, probably, yeah. Bajillions. Bajillions. One billion dollars. Um, what is, so the other topic I have written down um, from Jeremy is, is, is a, ASMR. Yeah. <laughs> what? I know you don't know about it. No, I do. I know a little bit about people that have this. Thing, I don't know, this tendency where if you hear someone going like, <laughs> then well, it like makes you physically feel a certain way. Yeah. I don't makes know. me feel annoyed. I, the reason why <laughs> I wrote this down, I was, have, I was explaining to the guys earlier, but I have a notepad. And if I think of something that would be a, a good conversation topic to write down on, and I was watching these ASMR videos and I was just thinking about how weird it is to people who don't get it, it must seem. May I interject <laughs> because, real quick? I don't really get it. Why don't you tell me what does ASMR stand for? I'm about to, uh, because I looked it up. It's called Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. Mm -hmm. A tingling sensation that typically begins on the scalp and moves down the back of the neck and upper spine. A pleasant form of paresthesia. I don't know what that is. It's been compared with a bunch of other stuff (laughs) I can't say. (laughs) Auditory tactical synesthesia. Anyway, so is that, so it's is pretty that, much is that what happens when somebody like nails on a chalkboard that kind of sensation? Yeah, that kind of tingle. Uh, the word is tingle in like the ASMR, like because it's it's like, and like it's yes, yeah, kind of like when your skin goes cold, kind of, and you get like goosebumps. Um, mm-hmm. And there's like a bunch of different triggers, and and not everybody experiences this. Is why I thought it was weird yeah. because I remember experiencing this as a kid and didn't know what it was until like only a couple years ago. And it's stuff like, yeah, like whispering and like S's and stuff like the way like S hits, you might feel, uh, I kind of just did it to myself right there. But um, <laughs> some, some people like, <laughs> <laughs> that's, like ASMR like, mas- <laughs> that's, that's ASMR masturbation right there. <laughs> there probably is. So, so um, yeah. But yeah, so I've there's those videos with the people have triggers where like sometimes it's like um, someone turning pages in a book, somebody mm. like tapping, like on things that make cool tap sounds, like it's a bunch of different stuff, but. But people are like making big YouTube uh, channels yeah. of, of a collection, just collections of those types of sounds. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's tons of ASMR artists 
ASM artists that are on YouTube like doing that ASM, kind of stuff. And ASM then it gets it, it goes even <laughs> another level because in the community there's a whole cosplay thing now that's also kind of intertwined with it. So like some of them are like doctor's visits. And the person there like has a green screen and looks like you're in a doctor's room and like, hi, like you're here for your appointment today. What's your name? Okay. And they're writing down on a pad and, and you hear the Yeah, you hear the thing and and another one is uh like a barbershop, like getting your hair cut. And the same thing, it's all dressed up. And they have a 360 microphone, so when they take the scissors mm -hmm. and they're clipping them like over the 360 microphone, it sounds like it's going over your head. Like, do they make the small talk that barbers make with you? Yeah, they do. Because Wait. some of it's just like to go to sleep. So it's supposed to be relaxing. Yeah. And so they're just kind of being like, oh, how was your day? Chip, chip, chip. That's pretty Good. cool. Chip, chip, chip. Yeah, it's been pretty slow around here. Chip, chip, chip. So it's that's just kind of like, okay, we're going to shampoo <laughs> your hair now. Like, it's it's totally weird for people who don't get it. But it it is because like if if your brain doesn't get the tingles and you're not, it's not going to give them to you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, yeah. So, so, people, so people seek out these videos. Yeah. You suffer from ASMR. Well, you don't suffer from it. Or, or <laughs> <laughs> wait, so it's but it's so it's not it's not a bad tingle. No, it's good. It's like ah, yeah. why would you be wanting? That's why, why it's not. It's, well, I was, that's where the well, my question. Well, you nails on the chalkboard. It's it's not like that, but it's a similar thing where a sound kind of makes your body feel away. Okay. Like a police. Sound. Yeah, nails on the chalkboard is not a pleasant <clears throat> feeling. It's no. like it's kind of like if you've ever gotten like a chill down your spine that kind of starts at your neck and like goes all the way down. It's kind of like, can be like that sometimes. It's hard to explain. So, what about what do you think about Cardi B ASMR? <laughs> I don't think I would like that. <laughs> what, would it, what would it be? I don't know if she can whisper quiet enough um, to do it. <laughs> we could find out. Let's see. Let's let me just look up Cardi B ASMR. Asthma. Right. Yeah, you can get down some. Uh, if I encourage y'all to try it, because out there listening, because you might not know, or maybe you do know, and but like. Like, for example, I remember when I was a kid in, in class and everybody, it, you're reading a book together, when everybody would turn the page at the same time, okay. I would kind of get like a little, uh, Here we go. Right? I, I want to show y'all, this is the Cardi B ASMR. She actually did it? So I thought you were joking. <laughs> just her sleeping? <laughs> She's just going, She's just oh, That's not bad. <laughs> and I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. <laughs> style. You can't see, they do hand motions too, kind of to the camera sometimes because it makes you sleepy. That's what she's doing. Yeah. She's going like this. <laughs> I like that. I don't like this. So Some people could, think it's creepy, but I, it's, it works for could me. Did you go to sleep with this? No, so I already pitched my idea to Jeremy, but he says it doesn't technically qualify as ASMR. What, what was your idea? I want to have a Vietnam one oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where it starts with beautiful jungle noises for, you know, 30 minutes or so, and maybe that's all you think it is. But then in the faint distance, you start to hear North Vietnamese chatter getting closer, followed by someone yelling, Ambush! And then all hell breaks loose, and it's like a 40-minute just firefight. That wouldn't work, because that's not ASMR. If, if, if the soldiers were like, hurry, let's get out of here. There's landmines everywhere. Like, and, then, and then somebody explodes really <laughs> loud. Okay, what about, okay what, about, what about same premise? What if it's a sniper thing, and they're like trying to climb to their but target? Or, like, or sniper shots. All right, but here's the yeah. thing, guys. None of that is re relaxing. And imagine this. If somebody was a veteran. Well, it's like a one shot. What if what if you triggered someone's PTSD? You have to put a trigger warning on there. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is the purpose? Would of that this? trigger? Like, I don't know. But it you, would. You're I think doing so. It as a you don't joke. know if it would or not. Like, yeah. it's a joke to you, right? It's not like a. What would be the purpose? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> What's the it's purpose an of idea. any of this? <laughs> What's the meaning of life, man? Everything's a circle. <laughs> it's true. That <laughs> likes a circle. It is. <laughs> have you watched those soothing the the soothing videos? Where it's it's just like a shot of, I don't know, somebody like custard being poured into an ice cream cone. Mm, that sounds motion. good. I have uh -uh. seen, I have watched some of those. Yeah, and I've watched ones that are like, this is hard to explain, but it's like a machine that's doing all these weird things, but everything's fitting just perfectly, like into each other. Like I, 
I really can't. I'm doing a bad job explaining. But oh, it's oh, like it's animated. It's not real. It's like it's like CGI. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, stuff like that. It's relaxing to but me, man. And I'll, I'll I'll throw that stuff on my laptop and I will pass right out. Yeah, so. I, maybe I should try that because I, I typically don't do that. Um, I'm trying to get into the habit of not like falling asleep with TV on because I, I was doing that for a while. Um, That's true. And I always want to read. And man, if I when I try to read at night, it just I just go to sleep. I, I get so tired. So I have to try to read in the daytime. But yeah, at nighttime when I'm trying to go to sleep, I'll attempt to read a page or two. <laughs> Do they uh, have ASMR for dog licking? Kind of. Just, just like dogs, dog. like kind of. They have uh, this microphone. <laughs> it's like a big. It's a big box, and it's got two rubber ears on the side. And the mics are in those ears. So um, hmm. when you're listening with like over ears like this, when they cup one ear, it sounds like your one ear is getting cupped. Oh, cool. So, so like, and they'll the do dog? stuff. They'll do stuff where like they'll rub the rubber ear lobes, like mm-hmm. somebody's giving you like an ear massage, like this. Mm-hmm. And you can hear it going like. It's hmm. kind of cool. So, to speak on that, they do have licking ones, hmm. where it's like a girl licking that rubber ear and like nibbling on it. Oh, like they're... So you can look... It's kind of like a dog, right? I mean... That's supposed to be like foreplay, though. Not necessarily, like. but kind of. It depends. Weird. But yeah, to answer your question, you could get one of those things and get Roko to lick the ears, and it could be a whole new genre. <laughs> James, yeah, you could make a make a bunch of money on this ASMR thing. I sure mm-hmm. could. <laughs> Actually, yeah. with all my studio stuff, maybe I should try to get into it, but nah. Um, well, guys... Looking at the time, maybe I should try to give Ross Idre a call. Sure. This is the first time I've ever tried to call anybody. So From your laptop? Yeah. All right, it's calling. Let's see if this works. Yo, yo. Yo, yo. Yes, yeah, I said then. Nice, nice. Yeah, man. Everything is good, bro. Did we catch you at a good time? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. They are be last week, right? I know. All right. You're, good, on, man. you're on the air. <laughs> yeah, man. So welcome to our, our little Lion podcast. I appreciate you uh, being available to, to talk a little bit. No problem, brother. Give thanks for having me, and I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I just wanted to um, to give the people a chance to talk to you a little bit you know through the podcast um as we get ready for the next show coming up on friday um yes sir absolutely yeah so um as you know we're, we're going to be at sahara lounge march 5th already and we're featuring ross idre and it's funny because we actually met you in chicago like some years ago before you ever That's came right. to texas yeah. It sure did, man. Uh, I forgot what year it was, but you guys came out there for some music. Uh, um, I think he was doing some recording, some uh, shows or something. Yeah, And then yeah. Uh, my brother, Wadada, Wadada kind of introduced me to you guys. And then, you know, yeah. you guys ever since. True, true. And I, I feel like you know, we kind of we always missed ways. Like, we never linked up on a show or anything. But yeah, I, I was always aware of what you guys were doing. And we were kind of just around the same time. But... Never, never did a show. I don't think. Yeah, you know, hey, it's a full circle, man. You never know, you know. Full Everything circle. in the right time, right? So. Yes, sir. But uh, yeah, man. So, you were in Chicago. What what made you come down to to, to Texas? And now you're part of the Texas reggae thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, we're looking for something better. You know, I'm from the Caribbean, man. You know. Yeah. From from the warm tropics area, and been living in Chicago for a while. So I was looking for something new. You know, and Texas brings that what I want the other life, you know. The freedom, yeah, the, the good weather, you know, better better cost of living, you know. I true. for from from my view it's is what I need. So, you know, I gravitated to Texas and I'm here now. Man, that's pretty much what the exact same reason why we came down, honestly. hmm Yeah. You're in Houston? In Houston, yes sir. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, man. I mean, we we were we were in Chicago. It was a struggle, like just getting good work and paying the rent and all that. And not that Austin is like so much easier, but I would say the cost of living is lower than Chicago, at least. And you know, 
And Absolutely. Yes, not I housing am. right now. Housing has gone <laughs> up. It, remember when we first moved here, though? The housing was cheap. It was a lot cheaper. And then it went up. I don't know what Houston's like right now. Yeah, I think they call that inflation, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The longer we stay here, just the, the, the more it goes up. But, um, yeah. but anyway, but um, so anything else going on uh, with you, man? Do you have any uh, new releases that we should tell the people about? So when, when they come to the show, they yeah. can, you know. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, the people should know about the uh, new song I released with Jadon Blackamore, The Way I'm Smoking, and oh, people yeah, should know course, that you guys <laughs> produced that one. <laughs> yeah, man. Produced by Lion Heights Band, you know, and the whole family, you know, beautiful rhythm, a blank check rhythm. Just Good released thing. that last Friday. And um, it's been, been getting a lot of momentum, you know. Um, I'm, I thank for the, for the opportunity. So, big yeah, up Blackamore, man. veteran artist. True. Been doing yeah. this for years, man. Yeah, and I got a chance to work with him, so that's always a blessing. Yeah, man, we got to say give thanks for you bringing him in on that because, and it was funny, people, you, I'm, you don't know this, but mm -hmm. we were we were pretty much ready with Blank Check to, to release, and I had sent the, the rhythm to Ross Idre some, some time ago, and um, I guess we just didn't communicate for a while, and then like right before we were about to release it, you slid in and you're like, yo, I got a song that has to be on this. Yes, right. And I was like, all yes, right, right, all right. We delayed the whole release because we were like, <laughs> this song has to be on the rhythm. So, yeah, Respect, thank you for that, man. No, thank you, man, for the patience, you know, and just the encouragement and just trying to get me involved. I appreciate that, my brother. But we, I had the song, you know, like a week or so before I called you, and then I saw the promotions coming out. So I said, right. so I remembered not to get you to get you guys the vocals. So that's when I called and then um, told you guys the, the motions and how it's going. And how soon I can get to the vocals, and then you know, just yeah, like man. magic, everything flowed together in, in the right time. And you guys are really pro about it. You like, you told me like, all right, I have it for you in a week, and then bam, you you sent it to me. So we were able to release it all like in a good time. Yes, so. all right. It's good to be professional, you know. Yeah, man. True. Mm -hmm. true. <laughs> it's funny. This is our first rhythm, and and. We learned a lot of things on the on the way about you know sending it out to artists and setting a deadline and trying to figure out how to bring it all together because there's a lot of uh, different people involved. So, but yes, I yeah definitely want to do another rhythm and and of course have you involved. So I'll, I'll send you some stuff soon. So, but uh, absolutely, that's lovely. Bro. I was wondering, uh, have you been to Austin before? It will be my first time coming out there on March fifth. So I'm looking forward first time. Nice, nice. Yeah, man. I'm glad that we we got to be the people to welcome you in, man. Because Austin has a nice vibe. Like we've been building it for a while, and even though COVID is kind of making things a little funny, like we we have a nice home at Sahara Lounge. So I'm, um, you know, you you're gonna you're gonna dig it. Yes, I I've been seeing a lot of nice scenes. You know, seeing a lot of bands come true. You know, on social media and stuff. And the venue looks really nice inside. You know, so I'm excited. Yeah, man. So one thing I was also wondering, since we're both coming from Chicago uh, and we're now a part of this Texas reggae thing, what, what kind of yes, differences sir. do you see or like what, what kind of you hope for the future of doing uh, the future of Texas reggae? Like now that you're you're doing it down here. Um, I see a lot of opportunities, man. like untouched waters, untouched territories, you know, and I feel like it's a perfect spot for me to grow with the people over here in, in reggae. But mm -hmm. differences are from Chicago, you know, the I say the hospitality of the people, you know. People are here more, you know, kind, you know, more patient. Mm -hmm. You know, not as fast-paced and just going, going, going. It's, it, you can slow down out here and talk to people, have a conversation. Yeah. And make good living, you know. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I feel that way. I feel that way too. One one thing I noticed, it seemed like in Chicago, it was a lot of old connections or like, oh, you know, like if you didn't know somebody, you couldn't just pop up and like get an opportunity. And yeah, yeah. Here, it's who you know, you know. Yeah, it was a lot more who you know, and you really had to prove yourself a lot more. And in in Texas, or I don't know if it's for all of Texas, but at least here in Austin, like a lot of people are new. So everybody's new, giving a bunch of people mm -hmm. new opportunities, you know, easier. Yes, I. Yes, I. 
that, you know, that, that was the no, one thing. Uh, there's no crab, there's no crab in a barrel mentality. You know, I don't, I don't feel no familiar with that saying, a crab in a barrel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What we say in Jamaica when everybody trying to pull you down to get to the top, you know, it's right. like an endless cycle of struggle. True. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I don't feel that as much like the, the pressure, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot more freedom, I would say, you know. But. At the same time, I can't dog Chicago because I do love the city and I had a great time and I love all the people that are still up there, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I got family. I got family members. I got good friends. You know, I got uh, places, foundations that I built. You know, in the shy. So mm-hmm. it's a place that you know I, I can't just leave. I, I go back frequently. You know, I was just there last week. So right. Oh, yeah, nice. I remember. Keep, yeah. So, so and you keep, actually did another podcast, right? Yes, so I was with um, Kayla the Thinker on the podcast called The Stir. Yeah, yeah. Tell, yeah, tell me how to go. Like, I, re- yeah. I actually follow that podcast. It went very well, man. It went very well. You know, Kayla, she's a young intellectual. She asks the right questions. You know, her energy is high and positive. You know, and she's also my family member. It's my cousin. You know, so it's it's just love, me. love me, brother. That's dope. I can't wait to see the episode yes, when man. it drops. It's, it just dropped uh, about four, four and a half hours ago. So oh, it's up on YouTube you know, cool, on cool. the Stir uh, channel. So yeah, and when you get time, you can check it out. Yeah, and 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 Lion Podcast people, definitely check out the Stir. It's, it's very cool and um, well produced. I like the way it looks. It's, it's funny because the Complex Studio, I used to work with somebody down there and, and KX used to give me some little sessions sometimes. So it's like really weird how it comes full circle. When I saw the first episode. Full circle, my bro. Yeah. So, that's very cool. Well, yeah, Complex. Shout out to Complex Studio. They were, they were a really nice setup over there, man. Man, so it's the grown so yeah. much and it looks so good now. I was shocked when I saw the pictures. Yeah, they dig tough Beretta. Indeed. So, when you go back, you know, you got to check them out. Man, we need to go to Chicago. It's been overdue. Like, yeah. we used to do it like once a year and, and it's been a few years now. So, yeah, I okay. miss it. Like, did you ever, you, yep. you got to perform at the uh, Montrose Beach. Did you ever get to, to, to go there? Yes, um, I think, man, this was some years ago, my brother. This is like 2013, That's 14. what I'm saying. Yeah, when um, the White Line, I think that's the name of this promotion. Yeah. <laughs> put on some shoes out there. Yeah, White Line then, promotion. Um, yeah, then I was with the Dove Music family from Chicago, and we all went out there as a group. You know, yeah. perform, man. It was nice, man. I did a lot of shows in Chicago, man. And that's the that's the foundation, foundation right, right mm-hmm. there. True, true. That, that I think that we share that, man. I feel the same way. Yeah. And I, I just always think back about Montrose Beach, how cool it was. It was right on the water, and it felt like a real, yeah, perfect right. setting for reggae music to play. You know. So, yeah, tropical vibes. You know, outside. Yeah. A lot of people can't go outside nowadays. <laughs> yeah, right. Strange. If we had a, if we had a nice outdoor space to play right now, that'd be great, you know, an outdoor venue. But I was gonna say the one thing that Chicago I think would have over Austin is that because Austin's weather is so nice all the time, when the weather gets nice in Chicago, I think a lot more people are excited to be out and a lot more people come out. So if you're playing like a patio mm-hmm. spot or a place that's yeah. like outside, I feel like you have like a really good audience just because they're so excited excited. to be outside and be enjoying music outside. And I think that that's something that people here in Austin, they're jaded by that. Or they take it for granted. Or just take it for granted is what I was going to say. Is that like, oh yeah, you're like, you know, we can go out tomorrow and catch a band because it'll be nice. It's going to be like this, like, True. For, for four months, so <laughs> like Chicago's yeah. like we only got yeah, we only got three months to go out and and you know enjoy ourselves. So yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. You only get about ninety days <laughs> yeah. of good weather. <laughs> yeah, so you enjoy you enjoy those ninety days, and then you know when it gets cold again, you gotta um huddle up inside. You know, yeah, huddle up inside. So. But that that does make the summer even more like hype. It like, does. I remember people just partying so hard and doing crazy stuff all summer. <laughs> Yeah, you can see me in Chicago this summer, 2021, you know, and other places as well, but definitely making a stop in Chi-Town this well, summer. Maybe we should organize and do something because, you know, we would love to go to Chicago as well, um, pop up there, do some shows. It's always, well, we'll we got to see what's happening with this whole thing, you know. I don't know. <clears throat> when you were up there, yeah, what was the vibe like? Were places open? 
uh, certain places were open to to a small capacity, and then they got a time limit, a curfew when they when they have to close. You know. Yeah. It was which was strange to me, but uh, the clubs and the party venues they're still kind of on lockdown. You know, compared to here, like Texas, it's it's free, man. Everybody doing their own right. thing out here. True. Right? Nobody's really on lockdown. <laughs> yeah. But when you go uh, Illinois, you see a big difference. You know. What about the wild hair? Is it yeah. is it still doing stuff? Uh, I think they do something till about maybe eight, oh, but wow. uh, I don't Dang. think they've had like big crowds or big bands. I, I'm assuming they're still open, but I haven't been. You know, yeah, I have to yeah. check it out. Well, maybe by summertime, it'll be it'll be more open, and they say with the heat too. I don't know if that makes a difference or not, but yeah, it makes a lot of difference, man. With the heat, people get more uh, encouraged. People get more brave. True. With the heat, people <laughs> do what they want. You understand? So it's going to be some uh, rebellious activity in the summer. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's... Absolutely. That's, yeah, man. And and honestly, yeah, you know that it, you want to escape Texas in the summertime. Like, the, the multiple days of over 100 degrees, you just get tired of it. Yeah, man. I had my first summer, Texas, last year, man. They hot, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, did, were you it's ready not, for that? It's not a Jamaica hat, you know. Yeah. Well, I was ready for the heat, you know. Yeah. But it took me a while to, to thaw out coming from Chicago. <laughs> I had to thaw out for a little bit and then I get um, settled, you know. Because Jamaica, but, Jamaica I mean, is hot too, but at least at night time. It's hot, but it's a, it's a tropical hot. Yeah, it, 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 it cools yeah. off. Yeah. In, in Texas hot, that, that desert hot. Yeah, man. In Texas, like that, when when even at nighttime, it's still ninety degrees. Like that's. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I know it's not, man. That's wicked, brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ninety degrees under the shit, everything. <laughs> true, true. Well, yeah, man. Um, but anything else you think we should tell the Austin people before we get going? Uh, you know, tell them I'm excited to be out there, my first time, and I'm gonna show them nothing but love and respect. You know, I hope the, the the you know the feeling is mutual. Oh yeah, man! I think it will yeah, be. Sure, it will be. I'm I'm glad to see already online. We have some friends and people supporting the the movements and supporting the event page. So, you know that that's kind of the purpose with this is that we want to um, share the love. You know what I'm saying? And and even though you don't live here in the same city, we can just work together on some shows and and help each other out with with getting our fans to to know each other. You know. Absolutely, you know, you got a network, and I appreciate the love you guys show me, you know. So it's not but love coming from my side, you know. Yeah, man. respect, bro. That, Same here. Yeah, you got to walk yeah. the walk. So, <laughs> all right. Well, yeah. Did y'all have any other questions for for Idre? All mm -hmm. right. Well, yeah, man. Give thanks for being on the podcast, man. And uh, we'll see you up here for rehearsal pretty soon. Next Friday, we'll be <laughs> we'll be doing it. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, big up Lion Knights, the whole family, man. Blessed love family. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Thanks, man. Respect. All right, bro. We'll talk soon. Yes, yes. And there you have it. All right, people. So that was Ross yeah. Idre. Make sure you go check out the song The Way I'm Smoking with Ross Idre and Blackamore on the Blink Check Rhythm. And um, anything else we should tell the people? See you on the 5th. Yep. See you on the 5th. See you on the 5th. 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 Fits, 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 fits,